Well, gang, we've had some good times, but the bank is about to foreclose on all of our houses and we'll probably never see each other again. But what do you say we band together for one last hurrah and go on a treasure hunt so we can buy our parents' houses for them? And also stop that bandit guy from sailing the giant pirate ship through the tunnels that lead to the castle to take revenge on the Alliance. Or something like that anyway. I haven't seen this movie in a little while. Welcome to the Goonies, Never Say Die. Place the game board full of all these amorphous blobs on the table where everyone can reach it, facing the side for the Goondocks Master, or GM, toward your GM for this game. Put the hourglass next to the board and place the four sand tokens on the top half. Put the three teenager cards face up nearby. Shuffle the item and treasure decks. Each Goonies player chooses a Goonie. In a two-player game, the Goonies player uses two Goonies. Take that character's mini, placard, and any special cards or tokens. Then grab a reference card and the number of wish tokens indicated on your placard. The Goondocks Master gets the GM screen full of all these handy references and the adventure guide. They should read through the adventure ahead of time so they know where the game is headed. The GM is both playing against the Goonies and facilitating the storytelling. Shuffle the 24 basic GM cards, along with any cards specific to the adventure you're playing, to form the GM deck. Note that for the first adventure, you'll only need the basic cards. Draw one GM card and take one GM token for each Goonie in the game. Keep all the other components handy. You'll be placing foes, cards, and tiles on the board as the game is played. Follow any special setup for the adventure, according to the adventure guide, and set up the starting room with its start token, all passages connected to the room, and any other tokens. Place an unexplored token in each room connected by a passage. Then, have the Goonies players place their minis in the start room and read the adventure's introduction aloud. And for the first game, you'll want to start by reading the story at the bottom of page three first. Each adventure will give the Goonies a different objective, some, or all of which, will be revealed partway through playing the game. The Goondocks Master's objective is to keep the Goonies from winning long enough for the hourglass to run out of sand. Throughout the game, all players will, at one point or another, need to roll dice to check how successful their actions and abilities are. There are three types of checks, strength, dexterity, and search. Most checks have a difficulty, which is the number of bones you need to roll to pass the check. For every skull rolled, the GM gains one GM token. Goonies placards, boss placards, and faux reference cards all show the number and size of dice to roll for each check type. There are three sizes of dice, and the larger the dice, the better the chances of success. Before you roll, you can upgrade one or more dice to the next size up, always starting with the smallest die. To do this, Goonies players must spend a wish token, and the GM must spend a GM token. You can upgrade as many dice as many times as you have tokens for. Goonies players can also ask for help on a check from other Goonies in the same room. If they agree, they spend a wish token to give you one die of the check's type according to their own placard. A die gained from teamwork can't be upgraded though, and you can never roll more than three dice on a single check. Goonies can also call on the help of teenagers. Flip a teenager card face down to add a green die to the corresponding check type. But again, remember, you can never roll more than three dice on a check. Whenever the GM moves a sand token to the bottom half of the hourglass, the Goonies may choose one teenager card to flip face up. The game is played in a series of rounds. At the start of every Goonies round after the first one, each Goonies player gains a wish token and flips their placard face up. In addition to upgrading dice and lending dice through teamwork, wish tokens can be spent to prevent one damage per token. Each Goonie player then takes a turn in any order they choose. This turn order can change each round. On your turn, you take two actions, you can use item or treasure cards you have, and you can use your character's special abilities. Your available actions include moving to an adjacent room, which is any room connected to the one you're in by a passage token. If you move into a room with an unexplored token, you explore it, and the GM sets it up before you continue your turn. If the passage has a boot icon on it, 
That indicates a dangerous passage, and you must pass a dexterity check of one in order to cross. If you fail, you stay in the room you started in, but you can try again with another action. Your fellow Goonies can offer teamwork when you cross a dangerous passage if they're in either of the two rooms. If a passage has any rubble tokens on it, it's blocked. Rooms connected by block passages are not adjacent, so you can't move between them. Search a token in your room that has a lantern icon on it. To do this, tell the GM which token you want to search, then roll a search check. No matter the outcome, draw one item card. If you roll two or more bones, draw a treasure card as well. Items are one-time use cards that are discarded when you use the ability on them. Treasures stay with you, unless they say otherwise. If a pirate stash token is searched, the GM removes it from the board. If a bone pile is searched, the GM flips it to the side with the exclamation point, indicating it cannot be searched again. To take the attack action, choose a foe in the same room and roll a strength check. Deal one damage for each bone rolled. The same will apply when foes attack goonies during the GM round. A goonie can negate one damage by spending one wish token. When they take damage, place damage tokens next to their placard. When a foe takes damage, place that many damage tokens on or near their piece on the game board. If a foe takes damage greater than or equal to their health, they are defeated and removed from the board, and the conquering goonie gains a wish token. If a goonie takes damage greater than or equal to their health, the GM moves a sand token to the bottom half of the hourglass, and at the end of the GM round, the goonie removes all damage, trapped, and stun tokens. The rest action allows a goonie to gain a wish. This is a useful, I don't know what else to do right now action. If a treasure card has the word action before its ability, you can spend an action to use it. If a treasure says to do an attack with specific dice, those dice cannot be upgraded and you can't use teamwork. If it says to do a check though, upgrade and teamwork are available. You can also take adventure actions including anything specific to the adventure that the GM reveals during the game, as well as removing rubble or escaping traps. To remove rubble, you'll roll a strength check, removing one rubble token for each bone rolled. When you do this, you can ask for teamwork from any goonie in either room connected to the blocked passage. Boss foes, which the GM will use, can skip their attack action to remove all rubble tokens from a blocked passage but regular foes can't get rid of them and can't travel through them. When a goonie is trapped, as indicated by this token, they can't do anything except use an adventure action to try to escape. They succeed with a dexterity check of one or higher, but they can't use teamwork to do it. At the end of the goonies round, you can, if you wish, trade item and treasure cards with other goonies in the same room then discard down to two treasures and discard wish tokens down to your maximum, as shown on your placard. Oh, and I completely forgot to say this earlier, but as soon as your Goonie is done with his turn, flip your placard over. Then the GM round begins. The GM starts by gaining one GM token. Then they activate all foes on the game board. Start by taking a move action with any foes you wish to move this round. Foes can't move into unexplored rooms, but they can pass through dangerous passages without doing a dexterity check. Once all movement is finished, each foe may attack a goonie in the same room using a strength check. If there are multiple foes in a room, they must each attack a different goonie if possible. After all foes have been activated, the GM draws one GM card and may play one if they choose. They may also spend one or more GM tokens to draw additional cards or to play them. One token to draw a card, one token to play a card, as many times as they like, as long as they have the tokens. The only stipulation is that they cannot play two cards with the same name during the same round. When playing a GM card, resolve the GM turn effect, then discard it. Alternatively, you can save these cards to play as reactions to things that happen during the Goonies round, resolving the react effect instead. And that doesn't cost a GM token. 
If the GM plays a card with an hourglass on it, they do an end is nigh roll. If the condition on the card is met, they can do this for free. Otherwise, they spend GM tokens. Take three red dice, spend GM tokens to upgrade them if you want to, and roll. With two or more bones, move a sand token to the bottom of the hourglass and discard the card. Anything less, and you shuffle the card back into the deck instead. Then, discard down to five cards if you have too many. The round ends, and a new Goonies round begins. There are a couple other environmental hazards you may come across throughout the game. The first is a pit token. When this is placed in a room with a goonie, or when a goonie enters a room with a pit, they must pass a dexterity check of one. If they don't, they become trapped, immediately halting all movement. Foes aren't affected by pits. The next is the flooded token. When a goonie is in a flooded room, upgrades and teamwork cost one extra wish token. And again, foes aren't affected. The adventure ends when either the Goonies have completed their objective for the adventure, or the GM starts a GM round with all four sand tokens at the bottom of the hourglass. But the game isn't over yet. There are nine adventures to play through, so you might want to play a few of them in a row, swapping the GM seat as you go. Either way, that's the gist of how to play the Goonies Never Say Die. Hey there, my name's Kyle McCarley. I'm a voice actor by trade. You may have heard me as one of these guys, but I'm here to talk to you now about one of my favorite hobbies, board games. I love them. If you like board games, you should check out The Board and Barrel every Sunday night at 7.30 Pacific on twitch.tv slash Kyle McCarley, where me and my buddies play board games. We also give you guys a chance to help us or hurt us, depending on how you feel, with our buff and nerf house rules. And we have virtual bingo cards you can fill out while you're watching the show. It's a good time. Hope to see you there.